Hello, today I am going to talk about trazodone, specifically the use for insomnia. Trazodone is an old antidepressant that came after the advent of tricyclic antidepressants, but before the first SSRI, Prozac. Um, Trazodone has an interesting history in the sense that while it is effective for major depressive disorder and also has some efficacy for anxiety, it's almost never used for these reasons. And the reason being, it is such a sedating drug. The dosage needed to affect mood and anxiety is uh, 300 about. Some people might need even need 400 and even 50 milligrams is very sedating for a lot of people. So, trazodone for insomnia. Let's talk about a couple things. So, how does this work? So, I've got pulled up on my computer the binding profiles, also known as KI, of all of the different uh, chemicals and metabolites that so pulled up, I have all of the different binding profiles of trazodone, also known as KI. A smaller KI means that it is binds with more affinity to the receptors that they are generally blocking. Uh, if you need to more information about uh, what binding profiles are or how to interpret KI, I'm going to have a link in the description. So, okay, so let's look at this. Number one, the very top one that I've highlighted is for the serotonin uh, transporter gene, uh, uh, receptor, I'm sorry. So trazodone has essentially no affinity towards the uh, serotonin transporter. So this is not an SSRI. This does not work the same way as Prozac or Zoloft. Um, so let's go down to the serotonin receptor subtypes, specifically the 5-HT2 receptors. So if we look at this, 5-HT2A um, has a very strong affinity, trazodone does to this, and also a strong affinity to the uh, metabolite. So trazodone is broken down and one of the active metabolites is called MCPP, and it's thought that MCPP has a lot to do with how trazodone works for people. And as you can see, um, with some of the serotonin receptors, it becomes even more powerful uh, antagonists of these when you break it down into MCPP. So we see that trazodone has activity at the 5H2A, B, and C receptors mostly. This might have to do with trazodone's effect on sleep, although I'm not super convinced of that. Now, if we go down to the one that I've highlighted in pink, uh, <laughs> I hope that you can understand my little key drawing. I'm not that great at drawing, but what it does with the alpha-1 receptor, I think personally, is the key ingredient to trazodone. This is probably why it's sedating, and this is probably what causes trazodone side effects, which we'll get into in more detail. So the alpha-1 receptor, its KI is even down to 12. Uh, that, that means that trazodone, even in small concentrations, is able to bind and block the alpha-1 receptor. This will have uh, effects such as making you feel sedated, reducing anxiety. It's essentially an alpha blocker drug. This is also probably why it causes orthostatic hypotension. Uh, this is when you get up and you feel dizzy suddenly. This is a side effect, um, especially concerning for the elderly. And this probably underlies the very rare but dreaded side effect of priapism, which I have a whole video for, and I will link in the description. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is if you go down to uh, the H1 receptor, this is histamine, the, the main histamine receptor. You know, the KI is somewhere between 220 to over 1,000, which, which suggests that um, being an antihistamine is probably not really part of its sedating qualities. And I mention this because I've read many uh, articles and um, 
over the internet that claim that it might make you tired because of its histamine blockade. I don't believe it. And then the last thing I wanted to show is that if we scroll down to the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, this has no affinity whatsoever. It's somewhere over 10,000 Ki. What this means is that, and this is great news, um, trazodone does not have any anticholinergic effects. This does not bind muscarinic receptors. For those that don't know what this is, blocking acetylcholine receptors can be very sedating. Benadryl, Unisom, or doxylamine succinate, these work through not only histamine, but acetylcholine, acetylcholine receptor blockers. And it can be sedating, but it also makes you feel like super whack. Anyone that's taken uh, the NyQuil or Unisom or whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, it's pretty crazy. So also blocking acetylcholine receptors has been linked to inflammation in the brain. And it's also been linked to the, the, the development of Alzheimer's. It also increases risk of delirium in elderly and uh, is bad in dementia. So this is really great news. Okay, so let's go over the main side effects. So dry mouth, dry nose, and getting dizzy when you stand up are the main side effects. Some people also get a headache. Um, these are probably mediated, as I said, through the alpha blockade. And in terms of sexual function, trazodone is unique in the sense that it doesn't seem to affect sexual function in a negative way like SSRIs or other serotonin booster drugs. This has not been linked to inorgasmia, it hasn't been linked to erectile dysfunction. There's actually um, at least some small anecdotal evidence that this, this actually boosts people's sex drive in certain situations. Now, the, the most feared side effect of trazodone, of course, is priapism, which is an inappropriately prolonged um, erection that does not get relieved through ejaculation, this can become a devastating side effect if not pre treated properly as it can cause uh, permanent penis to, uh, damage to your penis. And again, I have a whole video about that. Look in the description.